Hey there, I'm Amy from thecrazycraftlady.com. If you have Pottery Barn taste but a dollar store budget, you are in the right place, my friends. Today we are talking about fall decorating. We're going to make some fall DIY decor and craft projects. And everything I'm going to make is inspired by either Kirkland's or Pottery Barn. So let's get making. Pottery Barn has this new wreath out. It's a pre-lit faux harvest pumpkin wreath. Super cute, but the thought of spending over $100 on a wreath gives me a genuine anxiety. So we're going to make a dupe with dollar store supplies. I just started out with a plain old grapevine wreath from the craft store, and I also was able to find at Michael's these battery-operated fairy lights, but they're on a brown wire instead of white, which just kind of makes them blend in more with the grapevine wreath, popped in some AAA batteries, and then I secured the battery pack to the back of the wreath with the on-off button facing out. That way I could easily turn those lights on and off. Just secured that firmly in place with a pipe cleaner. You could also use a zip tie. I just couldn't find my zip ties at the time, so I used a pipe cleaner. And then turn those fairy lights on just to double check that they work before you wrap them all the way around the grapevine wreath form. And then Dollar Store has really upped their game with like the neutral fall florals and I'm really loving it. So I got some of these stems with like maple leaves and pumpkins and berries and I just used my heavy duty craft scissors to cut all the stems apart off each of those sprigs. So once I got those all separated I just came in with my hot glue gun. I know wreath makers have those fancy like hot glue pots but I don't make enough wreaths to justify that so I just used a dab of hot glue on the end of each little cut sprig there. I did start with like, the individual sprigs that had a pumpkin or berries on it and I kind of laid those all out and then came back in with my leaves and kind of filled in the background from there. Also kind of put more further up on the right hand side and less on the left hand side just so it was a little bit off center kind of like the original Pottery Barn one. And then to fill it in, I grabbed some of these fake um, acorns that came, I think it was a pack from Hobby Lobby. It was like acorns and pine cones, but use whatever you want, just something to add a little bit more like dimension with a different contrasting color. But that was it. I'm super excited with this dupe. I think this is like, it looks super high end and super fancy. And I'm really excited to be able to like turn the lights on in the evenings this fall. So I saw this windowpane wheat wreath wall plaque on Kirkland's and I absolutely knew what I had to do. So Dollar Tree has these little arched window frame picture holder things. I just grabbed one of those. I took my mini screwdriver and I removed that little clip. It can be kind of tricky. You got to use some elbow grease there. But I just pulled that clip off and I also removed the backer. And then just came in with some black chalk paint. This is folk art black chalk paint. Use whatever paint, black paint you have. There are quite a few details in this arched window frame thing, so I find it easiest to start by painting like all the edges and the, those inner edges within all those cutouts and then painting the flat surface. 
If I went back and did this again, I would have painted the front, let it dry, flipped it over, and painted the back just to make it look more finished, but I wasn't thinking about that at the time. But just paint everything black, let it dry completely, and then I just took some wired jute cord from Dollar Tree. It could be just floral wire, it's something thick and sturdy to make a base of your wreath. And so we're gonna, gonna start layering here. So I just twisted those ends, I made my little circle, and then Dollar Tree has like faux berries and stuff for fall, and so I grabbed some orange and white things. And then you're gonna use a lot of hot glue here. So I put a piece of parchment paper underneath my little jute cord hoop there, because there's just gonna be so much hot glue everywhere. Just these, these berries, they don't um, form or bend very easily. And they're also really long, but this is really the style that I wanted to use. You could also use like the traditional, like fake berries with like the silk flowers. I think that would work just fine. Just use tiny little pieces. But what I did is I just cut little sections of white and orange and alternated and glued them right onto that little jute cord circle. And because that circle is so thin that the parchment paper really is necessary to protect your work surface. Also a silicone fingertip protector is probably going to be your best friend on some of these hot glue projects. I do love my hot glue gun, but it gets quite hot. So as I went around that little mini wreath, I found myself in the habit of holding my already glued pieces together with my left hand, cutting and hot gluing with my right, and then just working all the way around that circle, alternating orange and white. And then you'll just peel that wreath right off that parchment paper and you're in business. Then I also wanted to add a little natural texture. So I just used this like raffia from my craft stash and I just took three pieces, folded it in half and made a little bundle and hot glued it right to the back of that mini wreath. Don't really worry about the length of these. You can trim them down to size later. Just glue them in place. I think I did five little bunches of three all the way around the wreath. And then from there, you can trim that like raffia down to size if any are too long or poking out to get the look that you want. And then you just simply hot glue your mini wreath right onto that little black arched window frame there. Looking back, I should have done this after I hot glued on the hanger, but hindsight is 2020. I just took some black twine, double knotted it on each end, and then hot glued those knots right into place on the back of my project. Here's another Kirkland dupe. It's this textured pumpkin framed canvas art and I saw it, I instantly knew this was gonna be a dupe that I had to try. So Dollar Tree has in the Dollar Tree Plus aisle the $3 wood plaques, perfect for this project. So I just applied a Mod Pod, a coat of Mod Podge all over the inner, like the backing inside that wood frame of this wood plaque here. I just used a one inch flat paintbrush and I made sure to get like a nice coat all over and then I set that aside to dry. 
I know myself, I knew I wasn't going to be able to get fabric to adhere to wet Mod Podge with like centered perfectly. So I chose to do like the heat set method. So I just took my rotary cutter and my mat and I cut the fabric down to the exact size. And fair warning, my, the one that I was working with wasn't an exact square. It was off by like just a couple millimeters in each direction. So keep that in mind. But I just cut some fabric. It was just this neutral tan fabric I had in my craft stash. I think it was left over from when I did, um, oh, fabric covered dollar store books. It was a really fun project. But then once the Mod Podge is dry, you can set that fabric right in place and kind of move it around without dealing with wet Mod Podge. I know this is not ideal for thicker materials. It's better for things like tissue paper, or single ply napkins, but I made it work. I just took my mini heat press and I heat pressed the fabric into place. And then from there, I grabbed some wall spackle. Dollar Tree used to sell it, but I haven't seen it lately. So grab it at Home Depot or Menards or whatever. And like I said, the heat setting wasn't, the heat setting the fabric wasn't the best, uh, best idea, but I felt that I needed to do it to get my fabric centered. So I did need to be very careful with applying the spackle to use like a back and forth motion. Never like stop in the middle of the spackle and lift straight up because then you're gonna peel that fabric off of that wood. Now, if as you're going along, along the edges, you start to see the fabric lift up, feel free to grab your heat press and kind of reset any areas along the edge of the spackle that you need to. But I found it best just using like a back and forth smoothing motion. I didn't have too many issues. And then I just kind of created a pumpkin shape. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is just a first coat. Then once that had all dried, I just took a fingertip and brushed away any like really rough pieces or any excess and tapped that off. Used my little desktop vacuum to clean everything up. And then it's time to add those ridges that were on the original Kirkland's piece. So I skipped the first few because it took me a few tries to kind of perfect my technique. I don't know if it was the wall speckle I was working with or what, but sometimes I found it hard to get it to stick down to the existing layer of speckle. So I had to really like using a press down motion and you're just gonna get your fingers dirty, you guys. You can't do this all with a putty knife. This is actually not even a putty knife. It's um, like for painting, it's like a painter's knife, right? I had a very short lived um, venture into oil painting. It was not for me. Um, but I just kind of smoothed down on one side with the knife and smoothed down on the other side with my finger. And then once you get that nice ridge, you can smooth with both fingers to kind of really smooth everything out. It's really just kind of trial and error. And the nice thing about like spackle is it's really forgiving. Like if you look at it and say, I don't like that, you know, smooth it out and try again. And that's it. I'm so excited with how this one turned out. I think it looks really nice with, I made wall spackle Dollar Tree pumpkins last year. I'll link to that tutorial in the video description. So many fun things you can do with wall spackle. Um, super fun to craft with. Pottery Barn here has these mini pumpkins and they come in these beautiful like muted tones in like blues and greens and orange and white. And I instantly knew I had to dupe this because Dollar Tree has these super cute little pumpkin clips with a great 
brown stem on them, perfect for painting. So I just popped the metal clip and the stem off, popped a toothpick into the top of the pumpkin and I got painting. Now the first coat of paint doesn't give you full coverage, you're gonna have to do two coats. I used mostly DecoArt matte and chalk finishes and at the end of this I'll show you my paint colors. But just don't be like me on my first pumpkin. I didn't have that toothpick securely in the pumpkin and as I started painting the top of the pumpkin it went flying and it made a mess and I had to like wipe off my craft table. So please learn from my mistakes. You really want to secure and in order to really secure it you may have to poke that toothpick in the pumpkin at an angle, which is fine, but you're just going to do a solid coat and then when they dry, just stick the end of the toothpick into a piece of scrap foam. I find that's the easiest way to paint all these little items. And here's my first coat on my green and my blue pumpkins. I also painted some orange on the orange Dollar Tree pumpkins. I used a combination of two different colors. This was um, Crushed Coral and Canyon Sunset. And I didn't even completely mix them in my little paint pot there. I just put a couple dabs of both colors. I figured it would be okay if it wasn't perfectly mixed. It would kind of give it a little extra texture. And then I also used this really nice parchment color. It's a really nice off-white color. I think this is going to be one of my go-to favorite like off-white paint colors when you don't want like that super stark white. I know I use Rust-Oleum linen white paint on a lot of projects because that really is like the perfect bright white. But if you're looking for an off-white, this is folk art matte in parchment. Pro, like little tip here. I got this little gadget at Blick Art Supply the other day with my daughter and I am obsessed. It's a little paint puck. It goes into the bottom of a cup or a jar. I leave it on my craft table with like just a little dab of soap in there, right? And when I'm working on these smaller projects where I'm changing paint colors a lot, I use this. I'll just wipe off excess paint off the paintbrush with a paper towel and then give my paintbrush a few swirls in the water, brush those bristles over that paint puck and then dry it off with a paper towel and then I'm ready to move on to my next paint color. This is great so I'm not running back and forth to the kitchen or the bathroom to wash brushes all the time. And then it's time to add some of that spackle texture to these pumpkins. So for each pumpkin, I added like a darker complementary color. So for this, on the light blue ones, I used some navy paint. And you can just do a little bit of paint on like scrap cardboard or paper towel. Dab the brush and then dab it off on paper towel so it's just really, really light paint on the very, very tips of the brush. Also, I don't think a pouncer is the best brush for this. I really wanted something with a little softer bristles because I really wanted very, very faint texture dots. And then if you have any areas where the dark blue paint is just too dark, go ahead and grab some of your original lighter paint color and dab in as well. And this is all a matter of personal preference. So you can alternate back and forth with the light and the dark until you have the finish that you like. So I did the light and the dark blue, the light and the dark green, and then on my orange ones, I layered a little bit of that parchment color for my white pumpkins. And then I also layered in a little bit of the brighter orange from the base coat. And then finally I did on the white parchment ones, I also added in a little texture with some bright white paint as well. Then once everything had dried, it was time to re-add the stems. So just pop off the toothpick Grab the original stem, add a tiny, the tiniest dab of hot glue. If you use too much hot glue, you're going to end up with a pool of glue around the base of your stem and it's just going to look funny. But yeah, just pop all those toothpicks off, hot glue the stems back in place and you're in business. And like I said, here are all my paint colors. So if you want to screenshot this, feel free. Otherwise, I will write out the exact like finish and color of all the paints that I used in the video description below. Like I said, this is just kind of what I had in my stash. Most of these were the matte or the chalk finish from Folk Art. And then I just put my little mini pumpkins into a dough bowl on our coffee table and I think they look amazing. But there you have it. Those are my four high-end fall decor dupes using Dollar Tree supplies. I do hope you enjoyed following along and watching these tutorials and these crafts come together. Until next time, happy making.